Hey, Kevin, what are you doing? Well, as you can tell by the fabulously clean workbench, we're not at the studio. <laughs> I am in my garage at the house, and I am playing with a new tool that I just got in the mail the other day, and it is a filament welder. And this is the filament welder. This is the, the little machine itself. It has a couple of grooves in it for the 1.75 or the three millimeter filament. And it came with this little jig. The one thing it did not come with is directions. <laughs> so I went back out to the website where I found this and lo and behold, all the way at the bottom of the screen, they had a little video, a little YouTube video of a guy using this but there was no sound. So it's been kind of a little trial and error thing. You know, watch the video a few times, come out and play with it, go back and watch it again, try to figure out where I screwed up, I mean, didn't understand, and, and just learn with it as I go and figure out how to correctly use it. And this is true of a lot of things that I, I wind up using in my art when I'm working, you know, new tools that I get. A lot of them I just have to learn. I have to play with them. I have to figure out how they're supposed to work. I have to figure out how they'll work the best for me. So one of the things that I didn't quite understand was you know, not only does this tool have the on-off switch here, but it also has this knob that goes from 100 to 220. And originally what I thought was that meant 100 volts or 220 volts. No, this is a temperature gauge. <laughs> When I got it out of the package, this adjustment knob was actually all the way maxed out, out past 220. So when I tried it for 30 seconds, the first time, it melted it just fine. It fused it together, but it made it brittle to try to bend it, to try to roll it, to put it on the spool. Well, it just snapped. Hmm, a little too warm. So I figured, okay, let's back that off a little. I went about halfway down, tried it again at 30 seconds. Well, it didn't even work. It didn't even fuse it then. So I started playing with it a little more, a little more, a little more temperature-wise. Kept going at 30 seconds all the time, seeing how well it worked that way. Figure out where, you know, where would I want it temperature-wise, where it's not brittle, but it still fuses. So I found right here, just a little below 220, so it's probably about 200 degrees and for a minute. And that seemed to work the best. So let's try it. Let me, let me fuse this one together and show you. So one of the other things in the package was this little, this little uh, package of, of paper. Feels kind of like an onion skin, you know, or maybe like a, a wax paper. And it's to keep the filament from sticking inside the, the, the welder itself. And it just goes right around here. You just wrap it around. And then come in with your welder. So what I did to get started was, after I put the, uh, the filament in the two sides, you know, in, in from one side and the other, I just used my little flush cut nips here and just went in and nipped it on both sides, nice and flat and straight, and then just slide it together so they're buttoned up against one another. And then I'll just take the paper and wrap it around there like I'm supposed to, hopefully I don't move it, <laughs> and then take the welder and just clamp it over there and hit the timer and hopefully we'll get it. And this is really the tricky part. To be able to get that paper to sit in there long enough where you can line everything up. And then try not to wiggle. <laughs> Don't wiggle, that's a bad thing. Ah, oh, the lovely smell of burning plastic in the morning. How long are you letting this cook? Well, letting it sit on there for a minute. That's what I found to be the, the best. Got 10 more seconds. Two, one, blast off. And then we just have to let it cool before you peel the paper off, because otherwise it's, bleh, it's like, a, it's like a, 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 a wad of gum under your foot when you pick it up, it's just everywhere. So we'll let that cool off for a second, and we'll peel the paper off of it. 
Just wait till it's cool to the touch? Yeah, just wait till it's cool. You know, the, the metal gets hot too. So just wait until that metal gets cold to the touch and then just peel it off of there. I did sacrifice a chicken and a small child not too long ago. Hopefully this works correctly. Just joking about the child. What about the chicken? <laughs> He's for dinner. It's kind of like Christmas. You never know what you're going to get when you unwrap it. Okay. There you go. Now comes the real tricky part. You got to pick up on both of those pieces of spring steel and slide this thing off of there without breaking it. Don't forget to hold your tongue out of your corner of your mouth correctly. Oh, there we go. So you can see it's a little oversized. There's a little bulge where it squished out just a little bit. So a little bit of sandpaper and just true that up just a little. Now in the video they showed using a a knife. They showed using a uh, exacto knife. It's supposed to be just a quick little, you know, trim and trim, and it was good to go. No, I haven't had quite that much luck with it, so I find it's easier just to sand this down just a little bit. So some of you were probably wondering, well, what exactly is this contraption? You know, I've got a spool on that side, I've got this bent piece of metal with a filament going through it, and I've got this post over here with a coil on it. What the heck am I doing with this thing? Well, this is something that I made, just kind of threw it together to work with the big eight foot tall 3D printer because I was getting bulges in the filament from this one supplier that I was dealing with. So I made up this little rig. I could put a full spool on one side, run it through this piece of just bent metal with a three millimeter hole in it. Nice, sharp, straight, square, just this perfect little hole. So I could size the filament to make sure it was the correct size because I had some prints fail because of a bulge in the filament that I didn't know was there and it would plug up the machine. So this will size it right to three millimeter. Not, not size it, it will check it at three millimeter. It, it's not sharp enough to cut the bulge off, but it's tight enough to catch that bulge. So it'll stop, stop turning, and then I can go back and file it down or cut it out, do whatever I can. The nice thing now is with a partial spool or two partial spools, I can weld them together and make a full spool again, rather than having to get up in the middle of the night and come change it. So let me just kind of feed this through and we'll roll it up and it'll be done. Just kind of line it up and make sure everything goes through. You know, and here, here's where I welded it together over here on the, the new spool. So it bent around, it fit right, it, all seems to be working. So I should just be able to put this on the machine and feed it into the extruder and it should work just fine. But just for the heck of it, I think I will actually get a couple of short pieces, weld it together and try it. You know, just to make sure before I actually put it to a print and you know cross my fingers and hope, I'll set up like a six foot long piece, put a couple of welds in it, coil it up, let it sit there and pull itself out, you know, see how well it all works, all coiled up like that, run it through the machine, we should be good to go. So that's just, you know, the, it's kind of a look at how I go about figuring out how to use a new tool, especially one that doesn't come with instructions. Or if they did, it would be in French because that's where this machine came from. I ordered it off the internet and it came from, from somewhere in France. So I wouldn't have been able to read the directions anyways. But that gives you an idea. You know, look at it, figure out how it works, figure out how you need it to work. How do you make it do the job that you need it to do? Even if it's not the right machine for the job, sometimes you can make them cheap. You, you can figure out how to make them work that way. So. 
I'm going to finish up here and go put this in the printer and see what happens. We'll see y'all next time. Yeah. The theme music from Jeopardy, really? Final Jeopardy? Now you're dating yourself. That would get incestuous.